Hi guys. Our uh, Yard's latest PowerPoint is about the mystery of Easter Island. So I'm going to be reading from a second screen over here and Joel will put them together as he has been doing. So what have we got today? We've got Israeli warplanes. I'm reading from a headline. Bomb several targets in the Gaza Strip. And this, just, this is just one of a few. Israeli warplanes. This was recorded on um, by Press TV on Wednesday, October the 10th. Israeli warplanes have pounded several targets in the town of Beit Lahia in northern Gaza Strip, with no reports on possible casualties. Palestinian security forces say. However, on Saturday the 13th, a drone, Israeli drone, fired at and killed a man on a bicycle in the northern Gaza, and then another man was mortally wounded as well, and four others taken to hospital, and there were aircraft flyovers that were manned that have been consistently, they say it's a matter of defence, so you've got the Palestinians trying to defend themselves with their dinky little homemade rockets and the entire Israeli air defence forces bombing them back. So let's move right along here. And so the Western world sits back watching as Israelite jets continually terrorise Palestine. Why? Why is the focus on Palestine? Their Zionist Christianity, we're talking about the beast here, is the beast. Heartless and insane, allowing demonic monsters controlling the holy lands. This is why Yahweh has chosen Iran and Islam to be the world religion. Now, measuring the earth is why Ezekiel and others were told to measure the temple. In Ezekiel's time, the temple in Jerusalem had been destroyed. He was just a boy taken to Babylon along with the prophet Daniel. The message was to measure and therefore to be carried out at the end time, which is now. So we're going over to Easter Island and begin measuring. Easter Island lays 5,000... No, oh, sorry, it begins with Tahiti. <laughs> Tahiti is 5,000 miles north of the South Pole. So from Tahiti to the South Pole is exactly 5,000 miles. And that aligns with the 50th layer of masonry, which is the king's chamber floor in the pyramid, the Great Pyramid. So the point of all that is, is that the, the uh, Great Pyramid is a mini um, in numbers of the uh, Earth itself. So uh, therefore, they know damn well that uh, all these numbers of the Great Pyramid uh, reflect in the uh, structure of the Earth itself. Right. Now, we're measuring from... That's the tip of New Zealand. Now, New Zealand is 888 miles between latitudes. Cook discovered that on his uh, trip there after being in... Uh, uh, and uh, to the from coast to coast, the shortest point is 2,399 miles. So there it is. There, I've uh, verified this with uh, Magellan. Yeah. So the distance is 2,085.22 nautical miles. That gives us a number to work with. 2085 in Greek is to instruct differently, teach other doctrine, and in brackets, wise. Now in kilometres, it's 3861, and it means paradoxos, which is contrary to expectation, and in miles is 2399, and that word, uh, number means idiots, and ignoramus, ignorant and unlearned. And that's exactly what we are dealing with. Most of you watching are in that category. Hmm. 
So we've measured from New Zealand and its Zionist Christian churches to Tahiti because Tahiti has a mountain that is 7,353 feet high. That number, 7353, is the area of the Shroud of Turin, which is 171 inches long by 43 inches wide. It is, Tahiti is also where a pyramid was discovered by Lieutenant Cook, Mare of Mahayetea. Its footprint is 23,229 square feet. Now that is the age that Yahweh's grandfather was. If you divide that number by years, he was 63.6 years old. 63.6 is a reference to Isaiah 63 verses 1 through to 6. It's a photograph of the pyramid on Tahiti. Now the point of this uh, pyramid, 10 years later they returned and destroyed it. Now it's uh, 78 metres long to give you some idea. It's almost half as big as the football field. And can you imagine the, the mass of stones that's in it, yet they destroyed it utterly. Very odd, isn't it? This is uh, uh, the uh, endeavour. Uh, it's called Devour. But uh, this particular ship here was rebuilt um, by some lunatics that thought it was a great thing to do. Now the ship's log reveals that Lieutenant Cook's measurements are 267 multiplied, you know, 267 feet long by 87 feet wide. However, since Yahweh made it known 20 years ago, all references to it have altered the base and re reduced the footprint. The Zionists have known precisely where Yahweh would be reborn and that they had little time. Being idiots, they think they could forbid Christ, which is part of protocol number 14 from the learned elders of Zion. Now, of course, that's a reference going back um, three slides to the ignoramus idiots. Hmm. It would be this, the protocols of Zion. The mere fact that they're saying they're going to forbid me means I'm coming as a man, doesn't it? Hmm. Oh, dear. The endeavour was originally a merchant collier named Earl of Pembroke. Launched in June 1764 from the coal and whaling port of Whitby in North Yorkshire. And as such is known locally as the Whitby Cat. She was ship rigged and sturdily built with a broad flat bow, a square stern and a long box like body with a deep hold. Her length was 106 feet or 32 metres and 97 feet 7 inches or 29.74 metres on her lower deck with a beam of 29 feet 3 inches or 8.92 metres and her burden was 368 and then 71 over 79 tonnes. They had a rather large scale to wear it to that way. <laughs> Now, uh, when it was renamed from the, the uh, Pembroke, the coal ship, to uh, the Endeavour, it was on the same date as the discovery of Easter Island, uh, that was discovered in 1722. So this is uh, 1768, and um, that's the date of the resurrection, April the 6th, 1768. Moving right along, that's a repeat. Cook sighted the famous comet of Messier on August the 30th, 1769. Now that's a period of 1.011 years after leaving England on August the 26th in 1768. This number, 1011, is the number of times the word David is found in the original King James Version 1611 Bible and his mother's birth date, so this is Yahweh's mother's birth date, which is October 10, 11, 1912. 
the comet date of August the 30th, 1769, when we add 88,888 days, is January the 11th, 2013, which is Yahweh's 69th birthday. Now, make no mistake, the top of the Satanic Pyramid of the Zionists have several agendas, all to eliminate all life on the earth. Hitler was right. Unless they are stopped, the planet would become a lifeless orbiting through the ether of space. These inhuman monsters are behind every evil the earth has endured. Now, ten years after the discovery of the pyramid on Tahiti, it was dismantled, which is another stupid move because it just brings attention to it. They were not smart enough to read the ship's log as recorded by Cook on board the Endeavour. It was a huge undertaking, the pyramid being 78.5 metres long with 11 layers or 267 feet by 87. I've uh, written this in uh, Aramaic and in um, Persian, um, just so that the watchers of this will have to get an Aram, Arab or a Persian to read it for them. You see what I'm saying? Here. Arabic or Persian. Yeah. Okay, so now we're coming to the mystery of Easter Island itself. There's some horses there, you can see the horse stands five and a half feet, six feet at the shoulder. And uh, you can see just the head alone is uh, three times the height of a horse, so it could be 15 feet sticking out the ground. Now, now they report um, 887 statues. I'm saying no, you're wrong. It's 888. But they insist 887. Now the island has an area of 63.1 square miles. Why? This is the return of the Lord God to judge the Jews and wipe them off the face of the earth. It's a reference to Isaiah 63, quoting, Who is that that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bosra? This that is glorious is in his apparel, travelling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. End quote. Now the distance to key locations means destruction. The largest statue, the Lord statue, is called El Gigante. It measures 71 feet and 11 inches and they have a weight recorded of 242.4 tonnes. It is joined to the volcano by a sliver along its back. Now the number 7111 <laughs> 7111 in Hebrew is from 7107. It's meaning to crack off or burst out in rage, provoke to wrath and be wrath. Scholars continue to say there are 887 statues. But Yahweh has been saying for dec decades the largest statue is the Lord and there is another yet to be found. Where is the missing statue? There are 887 including the Lord's statues buried up to their necks, 30 tons or more for the larger facing the sea, immovable being buried in various angles. But beside the El Gante, or the Lord statue, is another one. There's no information on it. Her body is on the right side of the Lord, emerging out of the volcano. But before we go there, we're going to go back for a bit. From the most northern point on Easter Island, measures 8.88 .88 miles to the coast, one eastward and the other westward. When you join the two and three lines, they all measure together 30.50 nautical miles. And that number is the same number as the height of the rejected capstone to the Great Pyramid at Giza in feet, 
30.50 pyramid feet. Going back to the number of statues, 887, question mark, there is another. Now, the number 886 in Greek is unmanufactured, made without hands, not made with hands, while 887 is dimness of sight. Island legend relates how giant white men arrived, cut the statues, carried them upright, floating them through the air, lowering them into prepared pits. Then when finished, they went back eastward into the sky. Now to answer the question of Easter Island, we have to understand and condemn Christianity for rejecting the Lord. That's a reference to Psalm 118 verse 22. The stone the builders rejected. 30.50 pyramid feet high is the height of the capstone of the pyramid. And that number, 3050, is the number for Yah. So the pyramid is symbolic of Yah being rejected by the builders of the pyramid, who are the Freemason controlled. Western Christian churches, the builders of society today. When we select the most northern point on the island and measure to the most westerly and easterly, the line is 8.88. Add them all together, it's 30.50 nautical miles. Yah, that's the number for Yah. It's only found once in the Old Testament and not in the New Testament at all. So we have the answer. In the Hebrew Old Testament of the 1611 King James Version of the Bible, there's 8,674 words listed. Then, in the Greek New Testament of the same Bible only, there's 5,624 words listed in the Greek New. So the difference between the two is 3,050 words. 3050. Good enough. So what is it saying? It's saying that Christianity operating from the Greek New Testament is rejecting Yah, who is the capstone to the pyramid determined by its height of 30.50 pyramid feet. Isn't that marvellous? Aren't we glad that God is here? was a Jew and he couldn't do it this one, I believe. <laughs> now, Examining the area on the island where the statues were removed from the side of the volcano, the line across from the east and west of the 8.88 nautical mile at West Point, when you join with the line west across the island, the total distance is 30.50 and passes through the giant statue, El Gigante, the Lord. Right through your guts, babe. <laughs> What did your mother used to say to you? Punch him in the guts. Punch him in the guts. <laughs> she was a lovely lady. She uh, mm -hmm. filed at elocution, I believe. <laughs> now, here are the two, his El Gigante and the unseen, hidden. Now, I'd like to point out here that if a blind man showed up here and he just felt around, he would feel a chin on the statue that has been disfigured and and uh, obliterated by the Cook expedition. And um, with all their carpenters and their mallets and so forth, they attacked it and, and took the nose off and then damaged the eyes and made it generally uh, that you can't recognise what it is. Mm. But because it's so huge, I mean, the thing probably weighs 150 tonnes. Think of the logic here. Um, the chin, a lot of work, possibly eight feet wide, maybe more, and uh, five or six feet deep has been hacked out of the surrounding uh, area, but stupidly, it's blocking the larger statue. It would be the only statue on the island that has another something in front of it. Why not make the main Gigante statue where the other one is situated? Could have easily have done that, just chip down, but at least you can get the damn thing out. 
However, they didn't do that because the other one beside it is the 888 statue. Okay, so both of the statues are emerging from the volcano, representative of hell. <laughs> what, I'm representative of hell? <laughs> you can put them in it. <laughs> totally. <laughs> All right, Cook returned to England. Wallace had reported on the statue on Easter Island. Cook reported the 11 tiered pyramid. So let's, should... let's just go and put that in a little context here. Um, using the Harrison clock, which was one of my relatives who did, designed it, he won the longitude competition, £20,000, but the parliament wasn't going to pay him. It took him 50 years to build five or six different clocks. So he's very thorough. He made them smaller and smaller and smaller to finally I was down to maybe a plate size. The original one was huge. So over time they were giving him some money to carry on and then finally they confiscated all the clocks because that was in a rush to beat time. So whoever had a longitude clock controlled the oceans because if you've discovered something you can put your name on it and that's it and get back to it there's another point so what happened was that wallace on the uh, ss dolphin had sailed there and discovered out in the middle of 5,000 miles of ocean he discovered 5,000 miles from the south pole tahiti it has an area that is the number for gabriel when Cook showed up with another Harrison clock, he measured and in his ship's log again noted that Wallace was correct. Now he's a lieutenant saying that a captain of a ship that had come there before him was correct in his measurements. But he did have a uh, Mr. Green with him from the, uh, uh, what would it be, the telescopes and all of the Greenwich laboratory and Greenwich mean line is where it's all based on time. And he was responsible for getting uh, Harrison his money by going directly to George III and forcing, he went to the parliament and told him to pay him his money. So now they sail down there and Wallace, he then immediately sails and finds, because after all, uh, Easter Island was itself a very hard place to find. Now can you imagine uh, finding a little dot in the middle of say North America or Europe? That's what it's like with only navigation tools, but. The Dutch had been there before him and they didn't have longitude clock. So therefore, all I could give you was an approximation of where it was. So he was able to find it by going to the latitude that the Dutch had given him. And, uh, well, they'd stolen off the Dutch, more likely. And uh, sailed along until they hit it. And then he was able to lay it out. So what we've got then is the uh, 11 tiered uh, uh, pyramid which is the footprint, which is the same number in between my age and my grandfather's age. On Tahiti, not in Tahiti. On Tahiti. Mm. So um, by the time they got this information back to the Admiralty, they were packing their shits. And of course, they sent him out a cookout at a later date to, to study where Wallace had been. And he followed Wallace's footsteps after he had left, after discovering uh, Tahiti. Um, he then sailed on to. Uh, Easter Island and confirmed that there were these huge statues there and there's no doubt in the world that they discovered and marked the larger statue. And that's the most logical thing they would do. They wouldn't find the smallest, they'd find the largest and beside it they had a drawing, I would, I would suppose, of uh, what the two statues side by side meant. So the English would have tweaked because they're not stupid and sent back Cook to deface the larger statue. There you go. So when we look at the rock El Gigante was carved from, okay, why was the location to its left? To avoid the vast amount of rock required as well as where it is. How to remove it with 100 tons of rock in the way. So it doesn't make sense of uh, having it where it is when all of that other rock beside it, which now we know, because it is dimly seen, <laughs> is, one, is the 888 statue. 
The reason is obvious. Look at the chin of El Gigante, a sharp cut perhaps 8 feet off the throat level and 20 feet wide. The same shape in the rock next to it, clearly another jaw was being cut. The other jaw too difficult to remove, the nose and eyes a much easier task with the ship's carpenters hacking away and visible features and more likely than not the female would have had hands on her stomach as being pregnant. Keep in mind how huge these statues are and the time it would take to disfigure it. Let us assume that if we were to look at a piece of rock on the side of the volcano, you would not excavate three times the width of the finished statue and leave a huge 150 tonne or more obstacle in the way. When we look at other statues in the quarry, one can be removed, then the next, and so on. Therefore, the only logical conclusion is that the statue beside El Gigante is Asherah. So where is the 888 statue beside El Gigante? Both emerging from the volcano, symbolic of the man-made hell on the earth in the time of the end, which is now. Google Earth has been shown to be inaccurate in several of our videos. As of late, the Northern Hemisphere has been forced to update and is now reasonably accurate over short distances but the southern hemisphere is still inaccurate. Therefore, we always cross-check with Magellan's satellite GPS software. From the east coast of New Zealand to El Gilgante is 3,628 nautical miles. And that number is the word espousal, which means to wed the Lord. Now that is the um, displacement factor of the Great Pyramid. Those of you who have been following us know that the uh, statue, the uh, pyramid was laid out on four cornerstones, sunk into the bedrock, marked out with a very fine chiseled line to be 3.6524.24 pyramid inches. Then it was shrunk by 286.1, and this is the espousal. So when you take the um, 3.6524.24, which is 100 years, each p inch equals a year, then a day, right? Then we, we subtract 3628 and we've got re subtracted 286.1 and we've got 3628 and that is the two espousal numbers. I've drawn here um, measuring between latitudes, just again Cook had discovered, and it's 888 miles for the top part of New Zealand to the bottom part of New Zealand or latitudes, 888 eight, eight miles apart. Now from the southern tip of New Zealand to the South Pole is 4,749 kilometres. That number in Greek is stol, a long robe to the feet, garment as a mark of dignity that's found in Luke 15:22. Cook was using the Harrison clock, accurate for determining longitude. Sailing back from Antarctica, he noted a magnificent comet on August the 30th, 1769, and when adding 88,888 days, it lands on January the 11th, 2013. Yahweh, I'm going to get a cardboard handle that for the car, by the way. 69th birthday. There's probably uh, somewhere in the ship's log that's got the longitude and latitude of it where we sighted it, which would be interesting. So here we have Jar with the uh, Asherah laying beside it, defaced. So the chin cut, the nose smashed, eye socket still seen, the forehead damaged, the body disfigured, uh, the chin clearly is seen as being cut, that it'd be too hard to get rid of being so big. So they left it. Because they're idiots, right? Now, Gigante is 71 feet 11 inches and 242.4 tonnes, joined to the volcano by a sliver. That number meaning to crack off or burst out in rage, provoked to wrath and be wrath. 
Now, what I'm going to say here is that um, Cook, when he left there, he had secret orders to sail to uh, and find an alternative to Australia, so he sailed down to Antarctica. Magnificent piece of sailing, really. It was uh, to the point of uh, running into an ice wall, and then the uh, men had to use barge poles to uh, push off from the uh, being the undercurrent towing a ship under the ice itself. It must have been some horrifying moments for them. Two men, two Negro lads uh, died of cold. If you read on the expedition itself, there's some other rubbish they talk about where the uh, two boys were on the island and I was getting provisions or something like that, some island somewhere. And uh, when they was trying to get back on to the ship in a snowstorm, they froze to death. Bullshit upon bullshit upon bullshit. So have we done this one? Well, this is uh, Lieutenant Cook arrived on Tahiti 666 days after Captain Wallace, mm -hmm. who was on board the SS Dolphin. Wallace left Tahiti sailing to Easter Island. Now the islands are 4,139 nautical miles apart. That number 4139 in Hebrew meaning death or the state of Hades. So it, it's the island has an area of 63.1 miles. The largest statue is emerging from vo the volcano. It represents the return of the Lord God and Asherah to judge the Jews and wipe them off the face of the earth. Good riddance. Now Moses forbade the Israelites from entering the promised land. He climbed to the top of Mount Nebo overlooking Canaan, announcing the Israelites were continually evil, forbidding them to enter Canaan. Shortly after he died, Canaan worshipped Yahweh and Asherah. In the Torah it is a construct of the false Jews to choose themselves as the elect of Satan. They have managed to bullshit the world, but they've actually been outflanked by the royal tribe of Judah, which is the branch. It made its way to Ireland during the first stages of the Exodus around 1521 BC. All references to Asherah were removed and the anti-Asherah religion renamed Asherah to become Groves then set about destroying the Asherah statues and poles surrounding the altars to Yahweh. Now the name Yahweh is Jehovah from the Hindu Vedas and they predicted all of it and how God himself would come to the earth, be crucified, he would be named Jesus Christ. Back one, babe. Now, quoting from Exodus... This is the first of 24. Isn't it? Yeah, this is the first mention of Asher of the 24. It's Exodus 34, 13, I've quoting... But he shall destroy their altars, break their images, and cut down their groves. The number... <laughs> this is what he's talking about. The number 34, 13 is Michael, the archangel, in Greek. Now Yahweh's blood has been tested over and over and over and reported that it has three unusual chromosomes, numbered 3, 4 and 13. That's all been done by the Garvin Institute in Sydney. So 3, 4, 13 is Michael, the archangel, who appeared to John on the Isle of Patmos, that's the heavenly presence of Jesus, and... <laughs> Easy, I'm old, you know. Old and grey, your knees are bent. <laughs> now, getting back to Lieutenant Cook, he'd been given secret orders by the Admiralty to be opened after his scientists had studied the transition of Venus crossing the face of the sun on June the 3rd in 1769. He was ordered to sail south to find an alternative to Australia. Why would they want to find an alternative to Australia? Hello! <laughs> because God would be reborn there. Okay, now 
remembering the number. Still in the pyramid. He reached the latitude of 71.10 to 71.11. That's that number, the size of El Gigante. So the ship free with barge poles was almost destroyed. Oh, is that, it should be free. The ship, uh, Yahweh, yeah. Yahweh was telling before how it ran against an ice wall. It was freed with barge poles. It was almost destroyed by the tide washing the ship up into that wall of ice. Captain Wallace left Tahiti, then sailed to Easter Island and examined the giant statues. Cook sailed to the latitude of 71.11 and El Gigante measures 71.11 feet. Okay, so Easter Island was again later visited by Cook in 1774. Captain Wallace had discovered Tahiti, naming it George III Island. He sailed directly to Easter Island. Samuel Wallace sighted Tahiti on the 18th of June, 1767. Cook sighted the comet on August the 30th, 1769, 804 days later. The number is Ash Shur, the second son of Shem, and the area of Assyria worshipping Asherah, the mother goddess. That's just a coincidence, doesn't mean nothing. <laughs> so Assyria or Athura, which is Aramaic for Assyria, was a Semitic Akkadian kingdom, extant, as with other fellow Semitic Canaan, its peoples. This is why the Khazar Zionist Mongol self proclaimed Jews invaded Iraq and are now attempting to topple Syria. Palestine, Syria, Iraq and Iran, these are the people of Canaan. Moses forbade Israel to enter the land because of their rebellion. He was shown overlooking Canaan from Mount Nebo, then died. This is the uh, numbers again for uh, the shape of uh, Tahiti gives you the capstone of the Great Pyramid. 8.88 nautical miles on each side to the most uh, easterly and the most westerly in a straight line through El Jante and it gives you the 3050 number. So, is it a repeat? It's a repeat. Okay. So there's uh, a, a more of a close-up look of the uh, the chin of the larger, uh, non-defaced, and the one beside it. You can see the chin quite clearly being cut, and uh, it has uh, everything else being defaced. So. If uh, these people who, um, the angels, did that, they did it for a reason. They just don't go and uh, put a, a huge statue in the centre of a pile of rock and then have no way of getting it out. So that's the message, is that the Asherah stone is right beside it. This is um, in um, Persian and uh, it's giving them the idea of what Isaiah is saying is 63, 1 through to 5, because we've mentioned it before. And there it is in Aramaic. So we can see here that the priests stand on the altar, but what uh, archaeologists don't tell you is that they'd all been knocked over, and that was 250 metres or so inland, because a tsunami had come along, or appears to be an tsunami had come along. Uh, what, it, what it was, they never were standing there in the first place. What it was that they were placed in that uh, position as if a tsunami had come through and knocked them all over. The hats are missing, they weigh five tons apiece, the eyes are missing, the eyes are coral. They were found scattered all over the place. And of course they've started to stand these things back up again and put the five ton hat back on. Now five means in Aramaic or in the uh, New Testament, Father. So when you've got your priestly robes on and uh, you've got your priestly hat on, it's called a mitre. 
which is the eighth, sixth, seventh, fourth word of Hebrew, which is the total for the value of the Hebrew concordance of the Old Testament. So it ends with the mitre. So the mitre being placed back on is a really stupid move by archaeologists. And uh, I should have left them where they found it. So suddenly the rejected Lord is back. The people not warned by the church is suddenly panicked, heading in all directions towards the sea. Sheol, hell, Hades and death. This is a Christian world. As I said before, they began restoring their sins and putting them back so you can't read the message. It's all to do with Armageddon. These huge statues placed in the ground, of course, uh, 30 feet in the ground, the holes were dug on an angle and these things are put into it so there's no way in the world that anything would move them. And the idea is to have it in this various locations all angled and running in haphazard directions all over the place like a mad woman. Like mad woman's shit, I was going to say, that's a bit nice, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so... Um, it goes on, uh, there's some more Arabic there. And the, the point is that uh, when the CIA reads this, they'll have to hire an Arab to read it for them. Well, this is... Or a Persian. Mm -hmm. um, and you can read that one because you'll read it backwards. Well, the one before, this is the reference um, out of Matthew 5.33, where in the Peshitta, it, it, it talks about the Lord, Yahweh, God, Allah. And we've explained before that Allah is the, is the word for God, but it is not a name. It is a title, like CEO of a corporation or the captain of a ship. So it's his job description. His personal name as the Lord is Yahweh. Now, reading this backward, <laughs> again you have heard it said in the past, to those in the past, that you shall not lie. Let your oath be complete and fulfill it to Yahweh. So uh, that's where it's talking about Lord, the Lord, Yahweh. And then the next verse, it talks about heaven being the throne of God, Allah. Uh, but I say unto you, uh, do not swear by heaven, for it is the throne of Allah. Or God. So this is where Allah, um, you know, is the the word used throughout Islamic countries. It is not the personal name of God. It is his title. And his personal name today is Brian Leonard Go Lightly Marshall. I want to show you this here. We um, uh, for a screen capture. We usually do it on the one computer, but they've hacked me once again. And now there's nothing we can do to uninstall this thing back in his other computer. Mm. And they just keep constantly harassing us for the... It doesn't matter. It's all good. Okay. That one's going off. How do we stop this thing? F9. That's it. Done. Okay. Later, Gator, guys. <laughs>